Sherlock that this is a set piece event. It is a course that there's no opportunities for question and answers. Well, there is. He says he has questions, but he's not going to put them. Well, I, for one, if somebody here has questions about this appointment, I'd like to hear them. This is a public forum, and I'm sure the Minister would answer any questions that people have with regards to the specific nature of uh, the individual. I think it may be the case that there's problems with the process. It may or may not be. I haven't given that huge consideration. But we have been given 10 minutes for each group to raise whatever concerns we have. And if people have concerns about the process or the individual, albeit lack of knowledge or whatever, well then put them and vote against it. That's the responsible thing to do. We as a business committee set the scheduling of this against the backdrop of the legislation as we have it now. That's what we're working with. If any group had a problem with that, they could have tabled it before now. I think that has to be said. Um, that said, um, we obviously know that Mr Sullivan is being proposed as a replacement on GSOC for Mark Toland, who departed to take up his role as uh, head of the Garda Inspectorate last October. I'd like to start maybe by putting on the record an acknowledgement for the role that Mark Toland has played. I think the Garda Inspectorate itself actually has played an incredibly important role and the detailed work that it has carried out over years really and continues to do under Mr Toland should be uh, recognised. As far as I'm concerned it is the key oversight body and in many ways while other people are saying they're welcoming the outcome or the pontifications from the Commission on Future Policing in Ireland, well I am not because I can already tell you what's going to be in it. What's going to be in it is exactly what the Garda Inspectorate put in it uh, years ago. And to be honest, had the Inspectorate been listened to over the years and the recommendations that it repeatedly made, then I don't think that on Garda Siakana would have found itself battered from scandal to scandal. But there you have it. Um, I think in terms of Mr Sullivan himself, again, like the other deputies, I've no prior or personal knowledge of, of the man, I suppose, in some ways um, give a, a guarded welcome maybe to his appointment. The position certainly needs to be filled. We know that he was the US uh, EPA's Inspector General and that uh, during that time he was forthright in his cr criticism of the Office of Homeland Security uh, within that agency and what he described as them blocking his investigative work on the grounds of so-called national security, which sounds like a good attitude. Uh, that someone who's being appointed as a, as a GSOC in, in, inspector should uh, have. Uh, I understand he worked as a US Federal Air Marshal uh, in that service before. We'll try not to hold that bit uh, against him. But I suppose the key thing really in terms of GSOC at present, I'd have to say, is not really so much as who is or isn't appointed, but whether the organisation as a whole has the resources and powers it needs in order to do his job. Because no matter how good somebody is, if the resources aren't there, if the powers aren't there, then the job won't get done. And that's the real debate that we should be having here. Let's be honest about it, because we've been making the point for years that GSOC really is a paper tiger. And I welcome the fact that GSOC itself have repeatedly and publicly been saying of late that they don't have the powers under the legislation to do their job properly and hold the Gardaí to account, and they don't have the resources to do it either. And in the words of many of them, which we've quoted here before, it's almost like the organisation was set up to fail. They could not possibly do what they're supposed to do the way we've been set up now. And we in the Justice Committee in the, in the 2016 report on Garda Oversight and Accountability made a whole list of recommendations in regard to amending Part 4 of the Garda Siakana Act 05 in order to give more powers to GSOC. Things like GSOC being empowered to investigate retired members, a statutory means of redress for GSOC, where there's a failure to comply with requests for documentation or evidence, enhanced powers to GSOC in relation to uh, reviewing investigations and so on, issues that have been uh, highlighted in the House on many uh, different occasions. And we were told by the former uh, Taunish and Minister for Justice in the debate on that report in February 2017 that she was shortly going to Cabinet to secure approval to prepare a heads of bill to amend Part 4 of the Garda uh, Siakana Act of 05. She also said that we have to be absolutely sure the recommendations of the committee uh, and the changes to which they point are implemented. But when GSOC came before us in February, just gone, they were asked 
Had any of the recommendations been made? Had anything changed? They told us no. Nothing had changed months on. The legislation hasn't even been published yet, 18 months on from when the former minister promised us they were on the way. And I think GSOC themselves may be getting um, frustrated with the slow progress, who knows, submitted proposals in December 2017 for changes to the current Act. And yet we've had nothing yet. The Commission on Fu Future Policing, we keep hearing about, it's been banding around as a panacea to every Garda ill. But it's just not good enough that changes that could have been made uh, now, changes that have been called for over years, changes that were committed to uh, neither today or nor yesterday, but actually ages ago, are being delayed until the Commission reports. That's just simply not good enough because I think whatever about changes to the legislation and sitting on them uh, until the Commission reports, it's very hard to see what your excuse is for not giving GSOC the resources that it needs. And they have been, in fairness to them, very vocal in saying uh, that uh, what it needs up to now is not enough. Actually, they've been totally categoric about it. In February, they said a decision not to increase GSOC staffing resources at this crucial time will undoubtedly result in the organisation's failure to meet its obligations to the public and to its staff. So they predicted the future. They haven't been able to meet the expectations of the public or the obligations of its staff because the government haven't given them enough uh, resources. That's a fact. They've something like over a thousand open investigations. That's about 30 cases per investigator. It just simply cannot be done. They're investigating something like at least 25 whistleblower cases. They've had to apologise for the slowness in dealing with those cases. They've asked for 20 or for 12 extra staff to deal with the protected disclosures in 2017 and they were given just five. We know that two of their investigators have been seconded to the Charlton Tribunal and just as Mary Ellen Ring herself described it as being half a protected disclosures unit. And, you know, when you think about it, like, and we look at situations like the, the, we're in the middle of a tribunal of investigation as a result of protected disclosures, I mean, do we need a few more? Would it not be better that GSOC would be empowered to do the job and to deal with those protected disclosures? And yet, you know, Minister, because we've raised it many, many times with you, that in cases of many of those protected disclosures, GSOC have had that case for, in some instances, almost four years. Uh, where they have had no cooperation from the Gardaí at the start in getting the files, where they say that they're going to discipline some of their members, GSOC asked to sit in on the oversight and are told to back off. And I think we have to bring it back to the situation of this time last year when uh, GSOC were given a commitment by Minister Fitzgerald formally uh, that it would get the resources it needed. But uh, as I say, by February of this year, Mary Ellen Ring told us that they didn't have them. They sent in a business case for more resources, uh, but they're still waiting on a decision. And, you know, the case was looking for 37 additional staff at a cost of 1.7 million. That's a very, very small amount of money, uh, particularly if you look at the fact that Ungarda Siakana shelled out about 7.7 7 million to Accenture for 49 staff uh, in 2017. That's uh, 7 million more, to be honest, than the tw uh, for 7 million more for 12 more staff, which I found quite incredible. So maybe if some of that money could be diverted, then GSOC might get the uh, powers that it needed. I think in some ways maybe it's a mark of esteem, uh, or not, uh, that the department has up until now uh, held GSOC in that it doesn't have its own budget or accounting officer. The policing authority do, IREC do, uh, and so on. Uh, and I think if we really want to avoid seeing more, I suppose, commissions of investigations or tribunals of inquiry or whatever you want to call them, then we need to give uh, GSOC what it needs to do its job uh, properly, because we can appoint all of the commissioners we like, and maybe this person is the best thing since sliced bread. Maybe he is, I don't know. But to be honest with you, whether he is or whether he isn't. If the staff aren't there on the ground, if the powers aren't there in legislation, then really all we're doing here is making the beds while the house is on fire. And that sadly has got us into the situation that we're in with Ungarn Shea at the moment. Thank you, Deputy Daly.